Well, good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here today. The Lord has given us a beautiful day. Hallelujah. And, uh, so we have much to praise the Lord for. We're going to start out this morning with a song that Mm. Yeah. Oh, 
there's others too that have been, uh, been hearing and can't remember the names, but I'm sure glad the Lord, I'm sure glad the Lord knows, aren't you? He doesn't have a memory problem like I do. But uh, anyway, let's let's pray together. And uh, let me pray. If if something pops into your mind, we need to pray for. Go ahead and, and just let me know all that. Father, we thank you this morning for the power of prayer. Thank you, Lord, that we can join together as a body, as a church today. Lord, you know each of these that are struggling so severely. God, we pray for the also the family as they've, they've lost uh, a loved one. And Lord, we just pray that you would be merciful. And Lord, that you would just touch their hearts and be their comfort and strength. We pray, Lord Jesus, for these two children today. Lord, uh, for George, as Lord, as he burned his arm, we pray in Jesus' name. Take the pain away, and we pray that you would just protect him, Lord, from any infections. And Lord, that you would just touch him in Jesus' name. And we pray for that little girl, Lord, with cancer all over her body. Lord God, we just join together, and we just pray in Jesus' name that you would arrest the cancer cells. And Lord, we know the prognosis is not good, but with you it is. And we just pray that, Lord, that you would put faith in the hearts of the families. They will just look to you, believe the word. God, we pray that you would bring healing to that little one. Jesus, Jesus, we know it's so hard. God, we pray your mercy will be abundant. Lord, we thank you for all the miracles that you have been pouring in. And Lord, we just give you praise. Thank you, Lord, for that there's progress for surely love. And Lord, we just pray and continue to bring healing to her. Father, we pray for a revival in America. Lord, we've seen so many terrible things going on. And Lord, in our state has, has taken the stand uh, for abortion and all the terrible things that go along with it. God have mercy. God have mercy upon our state, upon our people. And Lord, we pray that you would turn this nation around. God, we just plead for the, plead the blood of Jesus. And Lord, may this be the day when your bride will be shining bright, awaiting for that day when you return. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Bless our service now, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The scripture this morning is uh, found in Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11. It says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed on in there, thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Such great advice, amen. Uh, by the way, I talked to uh, uh, Alan Love called me a couple of days ago, and uh, and his wife Shirley has been totally paralyzed on her left side. She's, there's been no movement whatsoever. And uh, and he said uh, they went to, to move her in the bed anyway, and she moved her left leg. And they're just praising the Lord. The doctors are very pleased. And also now she's able to move her hand. And uh, he said she's able to squeeze her hand, but she she doesn't want to let go. And that's once she squeezes her hand. And so he said, you know, it's little things, but they're praising God. And uh, uh, then we talked. He said, you got a couple minutes so we can talk? And I said, yeah. Well, two hours later, we're finally hanging up the phone. But uh, but he, he said, you know, my wife, he said she gets so discouraged and, and uh, badly depression. But she, he said, you know, he said, my, he said, Carrie, when, whenever you talk to her on the phone, she hears your voice and just picks her up. We tell her, 
we pray for you. Our whole church prays for you. And then she's encouraged. So we want to keep praying. I'm just so happy that uh, we've got. She so, oh, she's hiding in the pew there. Stuck. Sure. <laughs> I thought you fell asleep already. <laughs> sure, is going to come up and uh, and lead us in singing this morning. So, my talk clears out of my head. Yeah, it takes clear up, yeah. Okay. So, bless you as you come and. and uh, and say, we're going to a long time. Of course, she kind of had a good excuse, and her excuse is sitting up there in front of her. something the Lord said, bring to the church. And Nate goes out and he starts loading up the vehicle and goes to start the vehicle and the vehicle starts and the heat wasn't working. And I'm like, I had everything ready to go to get packed in the car. I'm like, the heat's not working. I'm like, oh, bummer. like, I'm going to work on it for a little bit. So us kids, we got in a little circle and said a prayer that the heat would start working so we could go visit Grandpa Gary. And um, I said, well, I've got some time. So I ran to the back and got out my worship book. And I was like, oh, you know, I was pointing out a few songs. I'm like, okay. So I just grab these songs and it was like and all of a sudden people think, oh the heat started working I'm like oh there we go so there's a reason for everything and I kind of believe that our heat wasn't working because the Lord uh, wanted me to do worship for you guys today so um, let's just get to a place and uh, in everything that we do you know let's do it for the Lord and uh, be even though we don't understand why things are necessarily happening they happen for a reason and like I said be joyful in those things Every move I make, I make it new. You make me new, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see you.
idea of, I always try to kind of go in with a general theme, okay? I knew Valentine's Day is getting close, so I thought, well, maybe I should think about love, okay? Because Valentine's Day, love. Then it's like, joy, that's also a lovely thing, you know, joy. And like I said, as I'm singing here, I really feel like it's kind of what was spoken about in the entry of church about how this our state, anyway, has passed the pro-choice versus pro-life. And, you know, we really need to come together. That vote was really close, by the way. I think it was like they beat us by a point, or of one vote. It was like, I think, 33 to 34 or something. It was by one vote, anyway, and otherwise we would have tied two votes to take it. So it was close. The race was close. We almost had it. But we just need to continue to pray, to stand strong in our belief in Jesus Christ and what he tells us is truth, and to bind together, to come together, to hold tight to each other and to Christ to get us through. But not necessarily to remain silent. There's a time to remain silent. There is also a time to speak out. And I'm feeling more and more like I'm being called to speak out and to speak more on these things and to share what I believe God is, is laying on my heart. I'm trying very hard to say this is not Shara, this is from the Lord, so find that discernment. But this song is one I haven't done since high school, as far as my recollect, the recollection of it, you know, by myself. Um, but it's called Shout to the North. Um, it's just a really good song, you know, about bringing your voice up and just shouting, you know, all over and making, you know, Christ known. And, and, and that he is in your life. Because I said, there's one thing to believe in Jesus, there's another thing to live for Jesus, there's another to have a relationship with him. It's not good enough to just believe in God. Like, I believe you have to have that relationship and find that relationship, and he will speak to you. Um, like I said, that's important. You can believe that there's a God, but let's be real, people can create their own gods too, so to find our God, the true God.
Thank you, Sean. I appreciate that. I uh, want to mention that uh, we've been praying for David and Brenda, and Brenda had her receiving place on Wednesday, and it all went well. And so that's an answer to prayer. We're praising God for that. And uh, um, another big thing today is it's Julie's birthday. So happy birthday, Julie. Thank you. And uh, I, uh, I appreciate so much that uh, Nathan and Shara came home this weekend and that Shara was willing to, to lead the singing because I really needed to be just sitting here spending time with the Lord. Yes. Oh yes, announcements. I forgot all about announcements. Thank you. Yeah, on the uh, on Tuesday morning we have our our telecast is on Garden Valley at, at ten o'clock Tuesday morning, and then uh, uh, Wednesday or Tuesday Tuesday night uh, we are meeting over at uh, Tom and Esther Johansson's place for uh, doing Bible study on uh, Revelation. And this is through the Glory Land team. And we now, we have our own YouTube channel, and that's uh, Glory Land team. That's what it's under, Glory Land team. You can go on YouTube, and you can see this uh, telecast of the study of Revelation. And there's three, uh, three chapters that are already up. And so you can see it there. And then uh, um, this Tuesday night we'll be going into chapter four of, Re of Revelation, and this is going really well. We're praising the Lord for it. And then if you if you want to come over there, um, you know you're very welcome to do so. It's it's always better in person than it is on TV, you know, or on your computer. But anyway, that's that is uh, Tuesday night, and uh, we start. We do some singing first, which starts about seven, and then we get into the study. Um, and then also Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night is Bible study over at Sharon's. That starts six thirty with the dinner, and then uh, study after that. And then again next next week and next Sunday, our our Sunday school at nine thirty, and uh, worship at eleven. Anything else that uh, my mind is just going a million miles an hour right now, and I, I guess I'm, I'm asking that you, you pray especially seriously for me in these days, and I don't know how to explain this, but it just seems like there's something really big. God is coming up with. And I'm feeling a pressure that I have to be hearing the voice of the Lord. And there are so many needs all around right now. And it's like the Lord is preparing my heart for something. And I believe the biggest best days for this church are just ahead. And I would ask that you pray that God will speak to you. Pray that God will show you how you can meet people's needs. To be sensitive to people. That you are not here just to exist. But no matter where you go, no matter what you're doing, God is going to place people in your path. And he wants you to be the light that's going to open up the dark places of their hearts. There's a lot of people in tears right now. And some of these people, what they need is simply someone to put their arms around them and love them. And you're those people. God's been preparing you. 
And I believe this is the day to be praying. Lord, reveal to me how I can be the one that's going to open up a door into some dark heart and show Jesus the hope. Our time is running out. And I believe we could see the Lord Jesus come at any time. And that's why I believe this pressure has come on me so strong. And I felt it so strong while Shara was singing. Just sitting here praying. God says, when we start singing, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. And that's why we have to pray. God, make us one unit that's going to make a difference in people. Some of you have been praying for a long time for specific needs on people's hearts. Now is the time. Now is the time. Be, be encouraged. Be encouraged. I am. Wednesday evening, I received a phone call. God knows what we need this I've been feeling this, this pressure for some time, and it's growing, it's just growing. And uh, I, I don't know what God's gonna do, but I've been feeling this. And it's hard to sleep at night. Been doing a lot of praying, seeking the face of God. But I received a phone call. The last time I saw this man who called me, he was probably 32 or 33 years of age. He asked me, he says, Gary, how old are you? I said, I'm 79. Well, he said, I am 89. That was a long time ago. And he said, the Lord told me to call you. And be encouraged to bring God's word. And don't give up. And I just said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the encouragement. Let's pray, Father. We ask this morning, Lord, that you would just help us to hear. Lord, we know that our ears, as, as we get old, our ears tend to get plugged up and we have a hard time hearing. That old eardrum tends to not work so good anymore. But God, in this hour and this time, give us ears to hear what the Spirit would say to the church. That these will be the most productive days of our entire life. As we get ready for that blessed day when the trumpet sounds. Help us to hear and to obey the voice of God. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture God put on my heart is found in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. And it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony 
that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I mentioned in the last in a couple of weeks ago, perhaps I can't remember now, that there is coming a day in the, in the last days there is going to be a great deception. And churches are going to one by one fall by the wayside. And the reason is, is because the Word of God is going to be sacrificed. The Word of God is going to be downplayed until the teaching in churches that are evangelical churches are going to be watered down to the place where people are going to lose their confidence in the preaching of the Word. And the things that are going to hear are things that make them feel good. But things like repentance will no longer be heard. Be no longer taught. And the way that Satan is doing that, he has to bring the preaching of the word down in the importance in people's minds. And what we're hearing, this is what I mentioned, and it came back out again in our Bible studies with Revelation. That a number of years ago, we began hearing a phrase, and that phrase is this, that the Bible contains the Word of God. Um, I, in the, on the surface, it sounds good. It sounds okay, yes, the Word of God is in my Bible. However, you tell something enough times and people will accept it. And they believe it. Now, doesn't it sound good? The Bible contains the Word of God. But that is a phrase that it is, is very misleading. Because, you see, you can have... Uh, you can have a, a, a container and that container can have a, a, a bunch of marbles laying in it. And you say, that, that container contains marbles. But the container could also contain rocks. It could contain petals. It contains sand. But it's still true. It's still containing the marbles. And so what is happening that phrase, the Bible, that, that the Word of God contains, the Bible contains the Word of God, but it is, well, it's, it's brought it down to the point where people then are saying, yes, God's Word is in the Bible. But then they start taking out things they don't like like repentance. Oh, you know, I remember years ago when we first went on the road. There were nights when we preached. And, and at the close of the service, we gave an altar call and people would literally run to the altar and fall on their face and weeping, weeping over their sin. Like we were down in a couple of churches actually down in, in Texas, or one, in, one was in Texas. And God gave me a message that was, I'll tell you, scared me. And the Lord told me, we'd never been in that church before. And I began to preach and I'm saying, God, please, not so hard. And I found myself saying, God knows exactly what's going on in this church. God knows. And began to list the sins of the church. And here is what God is saying. Unless you repent now, 
God is going to bring this church down. It's going to divide and the divisions are going to divide until there's nothing left unless you repent today. And I watched the pastor. He was in the back of the church. He was kind of out in the foyer out in the back. And he was storming back and forth and back and forth. I, I was hoping he wasn't looking for something to throw at me. But then I saw him raising his hands and like this, you know. And he was storming back and forth and he was praying up a storm back there. He knew the truth. I gave the altar call. And the people literally jumped to their feet and ran to the altar and dropped to their knees. Repentance. We were a church in Oklahoma City, and the church was a large church, about 500 people. And night after night, when these services went on, the church was ready to close their door. It was in such chaos. And the last night, people literally ran to the altar. Fell on, not on their knees, they were laying flat on their face before God, crying out for the mercy of God. Because they saw the sin of the heart. And that night God did a tremendous work in that healing in that church. And a few days later there was a great explosion in Oklahoma City. That bomb went off. In that building they killed so many people. And a lady that had found herself running to the altar, getting right with God, was blown into eternity in that building. Repentance had come. You see why God's putting pressure on my heart today? Because it's not just me, it's our church. We need, first of all, to lead the way in the cleansing of our hearts. But as God is leading in us the cleansing of our hearts, that's when the light is clean and we go out. I remember years ago, when before we had electricity, uh, Mom and Dad had a, a kerosene lamp on the, on, on the table in the living room. I still got one. And we had to move when the kids came because we didn't, they didn't know how to turn it on, you know. We had a kerosene lamp there. Mom and Dad, they would, they would uh, in the evening, they had their Bibles on the table there. And they'd sit with the tape, in the, you know, with the light between them. And, you know, Dad was a dairy farmer. He worked and worked and worked. And Mom, too. I mean, she was up at the crack of dawn and... And uh, worked all day. Now it's back when you ironed. She even ironed the hankies. They worked hard. Kids are all in bed, you know. We were all in bed, sound asleep, and things were quiet. And that's when mom and dad sat down at the table with their Bibles, with the lamp going, trying to read by lamplight. But you know, when you've been working hard all day, you tend to get tired and, and they fall asleep. Their heads will be laying right on their Bibles and, and the lamp's still burning, except now the lamp starts to smoke. And we all we had a big spot in the ceiling. You could see where the lamp had been smoking up and the, it was a dark spot. But you know, the next night when they light the lamp, it didn't put out so much light anymore. They had to take the chimney off of it, you know, and, and they had to clean the chimney where there was no light that would shine. This is the day God is saying, I've been giving you the oil. I've been giving you the oil to burn the light bright, but the chimney has got to be clean. This is why there has to be repentance in the house of God. First, judgment must begin in the house of God. It's not the anger of God. 
We just want to get more light. We want people to see Jesus Christ in His reality. When we talk about Jesus, it's not good enough. We talk about Him, we have to live Him. On a daily basis. Live in Jesus. And that means cleaning that chimney. And also, you know, you can, with that old lamp, you know, you can light it. But every once in a while, you have to trim the wick. Then it puts out a good light. It takes care. We can't afford to become lazy and not paying attention to make the make sure the lamp is burning the brightest as it possibly can. That people see who Jesus really is. And you know, like my mom told me when we when I told her I was going into the ministry, she told me this. She said, Gary, you must be the same man at home that you are in the pulpit before your people. Because the ones who are going to see the difference are your kids. And if you want your kids to live for God, be the same person at home. That was the best advice. And it goes for all of us. Who do your kids see when you come home? Uh, a lamp has to be clean all the time. You know, we talk about faith. Faith is not picking and choosing what we're going to believe. It's saying, God, your word does not contain, the Bible doesn't contain your word, it is your word. It is your word from cover to cover, and like one person said, the Bible is the word, is, is God's word from cover to cover, even the cover is because it says Holy Bible on it. I accept it in its entirety. Faith is accepting God's word in its entirety, no matter what God says, you say yes. It is agreeing with whatever God says. You know, it's kind of frustrating when you tell your kids to do something and they don't agree with you. They got something else on their mind. It's frustrating. But think of how frustrating it is for God when we don't agree with Him. I ran from God for a long time because He called me to the ministry. And I said, Lord, you're going to have to catch me first. And I ran for about 10 years until God finally last suit me and tied me up. So now you're going to, you're going to say, okay. <laughs> And I'm so glad he didn't give up. But God is calling us. He's got that calling. We have to hear him. We have to listen to his voice. And you're not going to hear the voice of God unless you know the word of God. There is deception all over the place. And the people that are being deceived are people that don't know what God's word says. And then somebody gets up and say, the Lord told me that. The Lord told me this. The Lord told me that. There's so many that are saying that. But if you know God's word, then you're going to recognize what's right and what is not right. God is speaking to people today. He is, but there's deceivers. You must be spending enough time with Jesus that you recognize Him. That you recognize what He stands for. That when somebody says something that's wrong, you say, there's a click in your spirit and say, no, that's not right. 
that does not agree with what God's Word says. This becomes such an important issue today. We must know God's Word. We'll never know God's Word unless you're spending time in God's Word. Unless you're spending time in prayer. This man that called me, if he would have called me 50 years ago, I'd have recognized his voice. But you know what? He had to tell me who he was. Because I had not heard him for so long. You will not recognize the voice of God until, unless you are spending a lot of time in His presence. This is why it's so important. This is why the Bible says, neglect not the assembling of yourselves to God. We need to spend time in the presence of God. Serious with Him where the faith comes in. When you know God's word, you agree with God's word, then you know also that when you pray in God's word, something's going to happen. There's confidence. God said it. It's going to happen. Whatever God says, it's going to happen. That's why we pray for healing. It's going to happen because God's word said it. It's not because I feel real faithful today. It's because God's Word says it. And when you're walking in faith, because you're agreeing with God's Word, you're not afraid to pray with people who are in need. People come up to you and say, would you pray for me? Or they're telling you, uh, telling you about something that's, you know, They've got a problem and they don't know what to do. Say, well, let's pray. Can I pray with you right now? Right now. Yeah. And you need on prayer. Maybe, maybe you're not used to praying out loud. A lot of people aren't. Maybe you've never just walked up to somebody and said, let me pray with you right now. And you take them by the hand. I don't know how to pray. Yes, you do. I've heard y'all talk to each other. You do a pretty good job. <laughs> if you can talk to each other, why can't you talk to God? You don't have to have these and thous and all those things. Just talk to him as your friend. Just talk to him as your friend. But it has to be the burden of your heart to reach the soul of the person who's hurting. You're not thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about the words you're going to say. You're thinking about that person who is in pain, that person who is afraid. And you're just talking to Jesus. And pray. God wants to put the light on full brightness in this church. You believe that? Yeah. Do you believe you can use you? There's nothing impossible to those who believe. But it's time to listen and then to obey. And then to not be afraid. Not be afraid. You know, Ken, you're facing some surgery coming up not too long. You know, the mind gets a little concerned about it. God says, trust me. You got a circle of friends around you and say, God, 
We're standing together because it leads her to believe. There's also a time when we ourselves are in that place. You have to rely on the faith of the people around you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that the days to come are going to be wonderful days because of you. Though the world is getting darker every day, Lord, in the circle of your people, there's a light. We do not walk in darkness and stumble. We who know you, Jesus, as our Savior, our Lord, our friend, walk in the light of your Holy Spirit as you illuminate the Word of God. But Lord, we also know without a vision people perish. So Lord, we don't just want to walk in light and stand there and enjoy it. But God, we pray you put a vision in our heart that every soul that we see will see as an opportunity to share Jesus before they plunge into utter darkness. And we give you the praise because you are God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to do one more closing song this morning.
show it in their face. See the light! We shove it in their face. And they just jump backwards. But you know, when we polish that globe, so it's clean. And then we like that the light so shine that they might see Oh, Jesus. Now they're singing. Do yeah. we really care for them? And yes, we carry it to those who are lost. But we carry it in a way that's not right. And God does the rest. Father, we thank you this morning. But there is a plan. And that plan, Lord, comes right from your throne. And Lord, you are striving today to bring the lost in before the cross when your church is gone. And Lord, we don't know how many days we have left before that trumpet sounds. Good news today. It could be tomorrow. But Lord, help us to be that light in this dark world. Walking true with you. Living the word of God because we know it. Because you put it into our hearts. Lord, then we won't worry about all the things in this world. We'll be too busy enjoying Jesus and living for you. So, Lord, give us that light. Give us that courage. Give us that oil to fill the land. And, Lord, may people see Jesus because we know him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. 
Leben, Gott, 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 Gott,